Finally, Chavez died and he inherited his power to Nicolás Maduro, like in a monarchy. Actually, I define the socialism of Venezuela a monarchic one because Chavez decided that his successor would have been Nicolás Maduro. In this video, we will analyze one of the richest countries in natural resources could become one of the poorest and how is happened. I'm talking about Venezuela. Venezuela is one of the richest country on earth with natural resources, but at the same time is one of the poorest one. What happened in Venezuela in order to become so poor and in order to not be able to exploit the natural resources that it has? <music> Well, in order to understand what happened in Venezuela, we have to comprehend the Venezuela political situation. In Venezuela, in the year 1998, Hugo Chavez took power. Hugo Chavez was one of the scholars of Fidel Castro, and he implemented a brutal social communist regime, what we know as socialism of the 21st century. But unfortunately, socialism has, had already proven that was totally unsuccessful from an economical point of view. The proof was what happened with the old Soviet Union and with the Berlin Wall fall, the world understood that the socialist countries were not able to, to grow economically and from a human point of view. At the same time, Fidel Castro had many followers especially throughout Latin America, but not only, also in North America and in Europe. And one of these followers, one of, of his scholar, one of his student was actually Hugo Chavez, that would have become a few years later the president of Venezuela. Chavez, little by little, implemented a terrible regime, a very authoritarian regime. And in the first years of Chavez government, the economical situation of Venezuela was not bad at all because it enjoyed a high oil prices. But when oil prices started to fall and with the inefficiencies of the regime in order to produce oil, it started to lose economical prosperity. Finally, Chavez died and he inherited his power to Nicolás Maduro like in a monarchy. Actually, I define the socialism of Venezuela a monarchic one because Chavez decided that his successor would have been Nicolás Maduro. Nicolás Maduro didn't enjoy oil high prices, but at the same time, the productive apparatus of Venezuela was extremely inefficient. Thanks to the inefficiency, you can appreciate the oil production little by little was falling and it was unprofitable and the country became poorer and poorer. At the same time, another important geopolitical event happened. In Colombia started the negotiation of peace between the communist guerrilla and the government. The communist guerrilla of Colombia, actually, they were drugs traffickers. So, they migrate probably the business from Colombia, thanks to the peace agreements from Colombia to Venezuela. So Venezuela started probably a new kind of business, not only the exploitation of its natural resources, but also some illicit traffics. For example, in Venezuela, there are two criminal bands that are very well known. One, the smallest one is known Tren de Aragua, and the other one is the Cartel of the Sons. So, little by little, Venezuela started to be involved also in unlicit businesses. For that reason, Nicolás Maduro, the president of Venezuela, as well as many other members of the Maduro's party and Maduro governments, are searched by the justice system in the United States. In the particular case of Maduro, would be rewarded with $15 million reward. And there are many others 
militars political ranking in Venezuela that are searched by the United States justice system. So this is the situation of Venezuela. So from one side, they were not able to exploit natural resources. From the other side, they open to illicit businesses. So there will be general elections in Venezuela very soon, but unfortunately, these elections wouldn't bring any significant change in Venezuela, mainly because, as I said, there are too many illicit interests that probably would prefer to maintain the status quo. So what could bring some real change to the Venezuelan situation? Well, the first one could be an immunity agreement for high-ranking military and politicians that right now they have a reward. Probably, if they have some sort of immunity, probably they would be more willing to abandon the power. This is one of the key to get rid of the current administration, for example, in, in Venezuela. Another solution could be something that happened in Panama. In Panama, there was a similar regime, the one of Noriega, and the United States had an, a military intervention in order to capture Noriega. It might happen also in Venezuela. But remember, it would have been e in Panama, it was easier because in the case, in the particular case of Panama, you have smaller country. At the opposite, Venezuela, from a geographical and from a military point of view, is completely different from, from Panama. So in case of Venezuela, to have a military intervention would be much more complex to carry it out. So this could be the second way to get rid of the Venezuelan government. And a third one, probably some sort of coup d'etat inside the same party of Nicolas Maduro. But these third options probably wouldn't change anything for Venezuela. So in Venezuela, you had a perfect example of what could be the socialism of the 21st century. From one side, you have a poor nation, you have millions of Venezuela that are looking for a better life by migrating. And you have an, the elite, the political class and the military that have enriched themselves through corruptions and maybe, maybe through illicit businesses. This is the sad situation of one of the richest country on earth.